How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donnie here once again. This time we're going to take a look at 4.48 redox reactions and oxidation numbers. So our objectives will be to identify oxidation numbers and redox reactions. So let's get started. Redox reactions. You can see I split this word up into two different colors. And the reason for that being is redox reactions, there's two things happening. First one is reduction, which is where we get the red from, and it's gaining of electrons. Now, this is kind of counterintuitive because you think reduction should be less. How are we gaining electrons and calling it reduction? The reason for that is the charge gets reduced. Remember that electrons have a negative charge, so as we gain electrons, our charge is going to get reduced. So the thing being reduced is the charge by gaining electrons. This, you gain one electron, charge goes down by one. You gain three electrons, charge is reduced by three, so on and so forth, because each electron has a negative one charge. The second part of that word is the oxidation, the ox. It's losing electrons. So the charge increases or becomes more positive or becomes less negative. It goes towards positive numbers, right? So as electrons are given away, charge goes up because you're getting rid of negative electrons. So the charge is going to become more positive. Get rid of one electron, charge goes up by one. You lose three electrons, charge goes up by three. A mnemonic, a trick to rem remembering this is oil rig. And what? how is that going to help me remember? Well, oxidation is losing, that's the oil, and reduction is gaining. That's the rig. So we're talking about, well, what's being lost and gained here? Electrons. You just got to remember that part. Redox, uh, oil rig. Oxidation is lose, losing, reduction is gaining. So let's talk about this whole process. Oxidation is when you lose electrons or singular electron and the charge goes up. So here I have a lithium atom and I'm only showing the valence electron. There's one valence electron. And what lithium likes to do is it likes to lose that electron. It likes to oxidize. So it starts off as Li with a zero charge. And you can see now there's no more electron. So what happened to the charge? Well, it became the lithium ion, Li plus one, because it lost that electron. All right, reduction is gaining electrons, so the charge goes down. So here I have chlorine with seven valence electrons, and its charge is zero. So what happens during reduction? Well, an electron is gained. So if we added one more electron, now we have the chloride ion, Cl minus one, right? That whole thing has a minus one charge now because it gained one electron. All right, so let's do a little practice. Has this been oxidized or has it been reduced? Well, let's take a look. We have Al, and because there's nothing written there, you can, it's a zero. So it went from Al zero to plus three. So from zero to three, the charge went up, which tells me that it's oxidation. So that first one is oxidation. Here I have Cu plus two, and then it changed to become Cu plus one. So from two to one, it became less positive or more negative. So the charge went down, which tells me that it's reduction. All right, oxygen here, again, no charge given. You assume it's zero. And it goes from zero to minus two, well, let's see, if it goes from 0 minus 2, the charge went down, which tells me that it's reduction. All right, here I have a fluoride ion, started off as minus 1, and it's going to, hey, there's no charge there, so it must be 0. From negative 1 to 0, that's going to be oxidation. It becomes less negative or becomes more positive. All right, so oxidation numbers. How are we figuring out what these oxidation numbers are if they're not given to us? All oxidation numbers are is how we keep track of electrons gained and lost. So essentially, it's the charge of that atom, all right? So we can think of it that way. So if Mg loses two electrons, it becomes Mg plus two. It has an oxidation number of plus two. That's the oxidation number right there, right? This right there, that's the oxidation number. If we have oxygen and it gains two electrons, it becomes min oxygen with a minus two charge. The oxidation number for that oxygen ion is minus two. All right, so here's the rules. How do you figure this stuff out? Rule number one, atoms in their elemental form the oxidation number is zero, always. If it's by itself, it's a zero. That's the way I think of it, because sometimes when I find myself all alone, just me, I feel like a zero. But that's besides the point. So here we got lithium in its elemental form. By itself, it's zero. Copper in its elemental form by itself, zero. Here's where I don't want you to get confused. This is N2, because it's one of those Brinkelhoffs. It's the diatomic molecule. Nitrogen will never just be one nitrogen atom. It'll always show up in pairs, but that is its elemental form. It's just nitrogen. It's just nitrogen, so its charge is still zero. All right? Second rule, monatomic ions, meaning just one atom that's an ion. Whatever its charges is its oxidation number. So if I had lithium with a plus, its oxidation number is plus one. If I had nitrogen ion right here with the minus three, 
its oxidation number is minus three. Should be pretty straightforward. All right, non-metals. So they typically have a negative oxidation number. Sometimes it can be positive. So rules. Oxygen is usually minus two in ionic and molecular compounds, with the exception being that peroxide ion, um, where each oxygen has a minus one charge. But almost always, oxygen, pretty reliable, minus two charge. Hydrogen. Well, hydrogen is one of those weird things. It's a non-metal, but it's on the periodic table on the side of the metals. Why is it over there? Because hydrogen likes to lose an electron. It becomes plus one, just like a metal, but it's a non-metal. So when a hydrogen is bonded with non-metals, it's plus one. And when it's bonded with metals, like in hydrides, it's minus one. So here I have HCl. Well, Cl is another non-metal, so hydrogen is going to be plus one in that because it's bonded to a non-metal. Here I have sodium hydride. So why do they put that hydrogen second? Because it has a negative charge. So hydrogen in this compound would be a minus one. Fluorine is minus one in all compounds. They're, the, the true reliable friend is fluorine. It's always going to be that minus one. Most other halides will also be minus one. So anything in the same group as fluorine typically will be minus one. Rule number four, the sum of the oxidation numbers of all the atoms in a neutral compound is zero. So basically it's just saying that if I took the, uh, like if I had H2O and I took all the chart, the oxidation numbers from up here and up here and added them together, it's got to equal zero because it's neutral. The whole thing's neutral, which means the sum of its parts got to end up being neutral. For polyatomic ions, right, many atom ions, polyatomic ions, the sum of the oxidation numbers should equal the overall charge of the ion. So H2O, overall charge is zero. Well, let's think about this. Each H is plus one because oxygen's a non-metal, so that tells me that hydrogen's going to be plus one. And there's two of them. There's two hydrogens, right? That's H2, so that tells me that I have two times the plus one from hydrogen. So this is just from hydrogen. And then I go, all right, well, there's one oxygen here with a minus two charge. The whole thing is zero. Perfect. So in polyatomic ions, like here's phosphate, the sum of the oxidation numbers should be minus three because the charge on that polyatomic ion is minus three. All right, well, I know each oxygen is minus two and there's four of them. So that tells me that, hey, I must have minus eight from all the oxygen. And overall, the charge is minus three. So I got to figure out, well, what's this phosphorus charge going to be? The whole thing has to equal three. I have minus eight from the oxygens. Phosphorus must have an oxidation number of plus five. So the math for that is kind of like, all right, well, we have phosphorus. We don't know what it is. I have four oxygens, each with a minus two charge. And that has to equal minus three. So what's, five, what's phosphorus going to be? It's got to be five. So that's how you're going to figure out oxidation numbers. So let's do a little practice. All right, well, I got lithium. Pause it if you, you know, pause it, try it, check yourself. All right, I'll, I'll wait. Press pause. All right, welcome back. So we got lithium all by itself. Its oxidation number is going to be zero. We got H2, another element all by itself in its elemental form. Don't let that two throw you off. It's still just hydrogen. So it's zero as well. I have Cl2, same deal. It's still just chlorine in its elemental form. So its charge is going to be zero. Oxidation number is zero. All right, NaCl. Well, I'm going to take a look. Cl is in this uh, group 17 right here. Like fluorine, it's going to become a minus one charge. And I can take a look. I can either look in this group one and see sodium's there. And hey, the pattern for things in group one is to become plus one. Or I know that the whole thing has to equal zero. And if I know chlorine's minus one, then sodium has to be plus one. All right, let's figure out this CO2. So oxygen is pretty reliably minus two. So if I have two of them, that means I must have a minus four from all those oxygen. And if the whole thing has to equal zero because CO2 is neutral, then I must have a plus four. And hey, there's only one carbon, so the carbon must be plus four. So each oxygen is minus two and each carbon is plus four. All right, let's take a look at SO4 minus two. Overall, has to equal minus two because that's the charge of the ion. And I know that each oxygen is minus two. And there's four of them, so that tells me I got minus eight from all the oxygen. And if I got to get to negative two from negative eight, I need a positive six. So I only have one sulfur there, so that sulfur must have a plus six charge. All right, let's uh, take a look again. Uh, SO3, uh, first thing you got to do is look up what is the charge on that sulfite ion, and it's minus two overall. So you're all right, if I have S. O3 with a minus two charge and one copper that tells me that the copper has to equal a positive two 
But now let's figure out what each of these things are. I know oxygen is minus two because it's old reliable. And there's three of them, so that tells me I got minus six from all the oxygen. If I gotta go from minus six to minus two, well then I need a plus four. There's only one sulfur, so that sulfur must be plus four. All right, well, how do you know if it's a redox reaction or not? All right, oxidation and reduction must occur together. The reason for that is you can't gain electrons, which is reduction, unless electrons are being lost somewhere, which is oxidation. These electrons aren't coming from nowhere. Something has to lose it for another thing to gain. So if oxidation numbers are changing, then this is a redox reaction, right? If things are losing electrons or gaining electrons, charges are changing, oxidation numbers are changing, you have a redox reaction. So let's do a little practice. Is this a redox reaction or not? So again, some practice, uh, chlorine, again, pause it, and then resume it, check yourself. All right, chlorine is going to be minus one. There's two of them, so that tells me I got minus two. The whole thing's got to be zero, so I need a plus two, which tells me that that one calcium must have the plus two. Again, all right, sodium, I know, is plus one because it's in that group one. So i got to have plus two from those two sodium. All right, oxygen's all reliable. Each of them is minus two. Which tells me I got a minus six from those three oxygen. All right, well, what's this carbon got to be? The whole thing's got to equal zero. I have a plus two. I have a minus six. This carbon must be a plus four. All right, well, let's take a look over here. Calcium, again, it's in a compound, so it's going to be plus two. Each oxygen is minus two, so we got three of them, so that tells me minus six. Minus six and plus two has, all right, well, what's this carbon got to be? It must be a plus four. All right, this too, not important for what we're doing. All right, sodium by itself is going to, or sodium in a compound, plus one, chloride's minus one. All right, well, now we figured out the oxidation numbers for all these. Is it redox or not? Well, let's see, calcium was plus two, and then the products, it's still plus two. Chloride was minus one, and the products, it's still minus one. Sodium was plus one, sodium is still plus one. Carbon was plus four, it's still plus four. Oxygen was minus two, it's still minus two. So this one is not a redox reaction. None of those oxidation numbers change. All right, well, let's take a look at this one. So again, let's, let's think about this. Hydrogen with the nonmetal is going to be plus one. There's four of them, so I get a plus four, which means I need a minus four. So this carbon here is going to be minus four. Oxygen, just by itself, is going to be zero for its oxidation number. Well, let's take a look. All right, CO2. Oxygen in a compound is going to have a minus 2 charge. There's two of them, so I have a minus 4. The whole thing's got to be neutral, so I need a plus 4. There's one carbon, so carbon must be plus 4 here. All right, H2O. Again, oxygen is going to be minus 2. There's one of them, so I have a minus 2. I need a plus 2. There's two hydrogens, so each one of those must be a plus 1. Let's take a look. Did anything change oxidation number? Yeah, carbon its oxidation number changed. Oxygen, its oxidation number changed. This is a redox reaction because we have a change in oxidation numbers. All right, so common types of redox reactions. If you want to just look and figure out, hey, that's a synthesis reaction, that's redox. We got combustion where you have a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen, giving CO2 and water. That's a redox reaction. We have single replacement where one ion replaces another. In a compound, generic formula is x plus y z equals x z plus y. You can see that the partners switched. There was a little bit of a home record right here. Wrecked this, happy compounds, marriage, I guess. And uh, yeah, so that's a redox reaction. Synthesis, where you have two separate neutral atoms coming together to make a more complicated compound. And decomposition, which is the opposite of that. You start with a complex compound and it breaks down into simpler parts. All right, molecular equations. What is going on with the oxidation numbers? So let's take a look. Oxidation, well, Mg by itself is zero. Cl is going to be minus one. There's two of them, so this zinc is going to have to be plus two. All right, in the products, Cl is still minus one. Mg, well, if there's two chlorine, I have minus two. This Mg has got to be plus two. Zinc by itself is zero. So what was being oxidized? Remember, the charge has to go up or become less negative, or become more positive. So what was it? Well, it was Mg. Mg went from zero, and it became Mg plus two. Well, how did it do that? Well, it lost two electrons. It was neutral as a reactant, and how to become more positive? It lost two electrons. So I'm gonna put those two electrons on the product side. They started together as one thing, 
and then they ended up as separate things. So in the products, they'll be separated. All right, reduction. Again, what had the charge go down? Well, I had the Zn started as a plus two, and it became zinc zero. How did it do that? Well, it gained two electrons. So it started as separate from those electrons, and they combined and get, you know zinc ion gained them to become a neutral zinc atom. So we call these the half reactions. So this is the oxidation half reaction, and this is the reduction half reaction. So the net ionic equation. The net ionic equation is just overall what actually changed. So you can see here, we had two electrons being lost, and then those two electrons were gained by the zinc. So overall, we have Mg0 plus zinc ion, and it became Mg plus two and zinc zero. You may be asking, well, what happened to those electrons? Well, you can see this arrow is like a big old equal sign. And we have two electrons on the left and two electrons on the right, so they're gonna cancel out. And then overall, this is what changed, your net ionic equation. All right, so overall, what's happening? Electrons are being lost by magnesium and then they're being gained by the zinc ion. Electrons are being transferred, that's redox. All right, summarize. Can you describe what oxidation and reduction is? Can you determine oxidation numbers for elements and atoms in a compound or ion? And can you identify a reaction as either redox, reaction, or not? All right, I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class.